Okay, welcome Shaul and Julian and Mike and Rajinder and Rebecca and Dawson and Julissa and Gersbachash and Ashley. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, we also have a special guest here, um, Veralio, and he's going to talk in a minute. Um, I'm going to mention that the main thing we're doing today is the number line, all kinds of stuff with it. Um, it's a pr mathematically, it's actually, I think you'll all find it really easy. Um, the hard part is language, which is often true with math. And so I'll get into some language. We'll also do some statistics examples. And that's the plan today. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to introduce um, Braulio. Braulio. Braulio is my student um, years ago, actually. Took like all, my all the classes all the way up through the entire college, everything we've got, basically. And he is working as one of the tutors in the um, Math Success Center. And he is here to help you. So um, here's Braulio. I'll let Braulio speak. Thank you, Larry. Uh uh, good evening, everyone. I hope the class is going well. I just came to tell you, um, oh, sorry, I just switched over already. Uh, so normally, uh, I'm a tutor at, uh, located in the library. I just want, I came to tell you that although, you know, campus is closed, that the services are still available, and that includes tutoring. Um, I'm going to show you right now, we're going to go over how to rent textbooks, calculators, and Chromebooks. I believe they're getting some in. And uh, let me just show you where to go. Because, um, oops, uh, one sec. So the two, like I said, the tutors are still available. So let me just show you how to get there. You start off at the main LTCC, LTCC website. Up here, you'll see library, you go there. And here they'll show you that their hours are pretty much the same as if we uh, were still on campus. But um, other resources are still over here. You'll find on the side. If you scroll down a little, this link right here for uh, LTCC textbook request, that's where you'll find textbooks. I know I might, I'm not sure if you'll still need textbooks, but uh, if you need calculators or if you need uh, uh, Chromebooks, you know, because now we're online, uh, you know, feel free to feel free to fill that form out once you click the link, and then they'll send you an email and tell you where to pick it up. Now, if we screw down a little more, you'll see number three talks about tutors. It's a link to Cranium Cafe. So let's just click it there real quick. So right here is a preview of all the tutors that are available. I'll, uh, I'll go over the page real, um, a little later. But first you click uh, the any button really just to just like to activate the page to make you log in. Go ahead and uh, read that thoroughly, click agree. Over here, there's a white button that says login with LTCC student ID number. So it's pretty much the exact same uh, credentials that you use to log into Canvas and the main, you know, to sign up for classes and things like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in real quick. Just kind of show you the steps and things like that. And afterwards, if you have any questions, uh, I'm just going to hang out on the side for like another five minutes, you know, in case you can think of anything. I'm just going through the steps real quickly, or as quick as I can. Um, so the page that we're eventually going to end up at is going to have uh, all the di different departments on the college, like the different services that includes uh, um, librarians and, and also uh, like uh, student advisors, uh, you know, counselors. Um, and then one sec. <laughs> All right, so this is my page. So student support directory on on the right left hand side so this is the main page where all the services are that i mentioned earlier uh coyote hotline academic advising counseling you're gonna have to scroll all the way down until you hit um oops not here but uh, there's veteran services as well until you hit library and learning services that's where all the tutors are 
here's my page. Uh, since it's me, it doesn't say anything, but let's look, take a look at Bradley's. You'll see a knock on door button. That's the button that you click to, to chat with Bradley and then he'll open up a cafe and you pretty much can use a interactive whiteboard, you know, pretty much um, kind of like a one-on-one, -on -one, but tutoring, I mean, online. Uh, he's a math tutor. So anyone, you'll find like various other tutors, like uh, English tutor, uh, writing tutor. There's also chem and, there's also chem and biology tutor, I believe. You'll find our office hours right under that title. So anyone with the math tutor title can help you out. Our office hours are pretty much uh, here. That's when the specific person is online. For me, I'm, I'm there Mondays and Wednesdays until 1 p.m. and then Tuesdays and Thursdays until, until 3 p.m. And, uh, you know, just uh, feel free to check out the main uh, library page over up here. That's where the kind of the, the gen general hours will be. That's when like there's always someone available at those hours just kind of varies, but there's always someone available. Uh, and yeah, just uh, go ahead and knock on, uh, you know, knock on that door. And that's when the uh, their little chat box will open and they'll be able to let you in into the cafe. So I'm just going to show you real quick the page that we're working with. So you'll see uh, uh, your, your, your photo is going to come up here. The person you're talking to is going to be here in the center. There's going to be a share screen option. So in case you need to show like a math problem on your canvas or something, that's where it will be. We also have uh, the ability to upload documents and an interactive whiteboard that we can use to, you know, to write out and so, uh, work out problems. But yeah, that's, I just, I just wanted to show you that. That's uh, kind of the uh, <laughs> step, like all the steps to uh, talk to tutors. And there's always, there's usually someone available. The only days we really have off are on Saturdays. You know, so feel free to stop by, you know, um, again, anyone with the math tutor title can help you out. They've pretty much like done all the math sequences, the majority of them have. And the statistics tutor title. Oh yeah. Let me... so there's a pre stats class, so the stats tutors definitely can help. Yes, definitely. Uh, let me Let me go back to here. So, Matt Tutor, Matt Tutor, let me find a stats tutor. Kevin, Kevin's a stats, uh, pre-stats and statistics tutor specifically. Yeah, Anna can also. Uh, where is she, where is she? Oh, Anna, Anna Smith as well, statistics tutor. Um, I believe there's one more person. Oh, I guess not. I thought there was someone else. Well. There, there. Um, Kevin is like actively taking the class. He's a, he's a embedded tutor in Wins class, I believe. So yeah, he's and kind Anna's of. The, Anna's the embedded tutor in my class. Oh, <laughs> Anna's the embedded. Okay, Anna's the embedded tutor in your class. So she's kind of. Not she'd be this like, class, but my other stats class. Gotcha. Yeah. So she's kind of like actively uh, taking the material. So she's like fresh on it. It's probably the best person to uh, get in contact with. But you know, again. Anyone with the math tutor can help you out. But yeah, uh, thanks. Thank you for your time, uh, Larry. I'll, I'll, you know, let you take over again. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna just sit in the chat for like five minutes, and then if you come up with any questions or anything like that, you know, feel free to hit me up. But yeah, thanks again, everyone. Great, thanks a lot, Mario. And um, again, definitely, definitely use the tutors. The, one of the great things is the cost; it's free. Free is always good. Um, so it doesn't cost anything to get a tutor and to get help. Um, and they're around all the time. I'm around some, but they're really around, you know, because I teach other classes or I might go for a walk or something, but they're really around. But anytime you have questions, you can all, all, almost always get help from one of the tutors. Okay. Um, let me ask before um, I get started in the content are there any questions at all about um, anything? Anything about the class? Okay, I want to remind you one of the nice points about the webinar is that it's a good time when you can ask questions and I can get you can get an immediate answer, which is always good. So that's that's one thing I can help you with. So if there's not any questions, if you come up with a question later, you can ask. 
put in chat box, talk, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, but I always feel free to ask questions. Okay. And also, um, you can post in the Q&A forum when we're not on the webinars, because the webinars are only once a week. So the rest of the time, I'm reading the Q&A forum pretty often, probably 30, 40 times a day. I open up and check to make sure that there's no questions or, you know, answer questions if there are questions. Okay, so let me um, share my screen and let's get to doing some math. That one right now, which will change. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, today is all about the number line. And what we're going to be doing is we'll start out with just a little brief review. Okay, and, and most of this class is review, but it's some of you, it's been many years since you even thought about any of this stuff, and it's worth having a little review. We'll talk about the number line, we'll talk about how to draw a number line, how to plot points on a number line, kind of how to strategize where the tick marks should go on a number line. Um, then we'll talk about how do you find the distance between two points on a number line. And the hardest part about that probably is the fact that there's gonna be often negative numbers involved, and you gotta deal with that. And then um, how to graph inequalities on a number line. And the hard part is the graphing on a number line is actually, I think you're all gonna find that's easy. What's gonna be hard is to get the language and understand what the language says in terms of the number line. That's gonna be the tough part, is there's gonna be word problems and you're gonna to have to look at those words and figure out what it's talking about. And then based on the words, what are you gonna draw? Um, and then finally, I'll give you some applications. And in particular, um, I'm gonna kind of focus on a couple main applications of statistics. Remember that's what this class is all about is to get you ready for the statistics class. One of them is box plots. And one of the main things you do in a box plot um, is look at a difference in IQR. I'm gonna add another one too. So we have box plots, we have margin of error is another one. And that has to do with, must, might be off by your guess. And that's often written as a number line. And then another one that's important is the um, uniform distribution. And again, I don't expect by the end of the whole class actually, that you're gonna understand all the details about a uniform distribution. But what I want you to be able to do is take a look at the picture and then come up with what are the distance between two points on a number line based on the picture? So that's kind of the plan. And then subliminally, hopefully you'll have seen a lot of the language. You'll have seen a lot of these diagrams and pictures and statistics. And then you'll get to statistics and you'll say, ah, I saw that. You didn't really go into the details of what it's all about, but at least I recognize it. And maybe you've drawn a few of them. That's the hope. Um, any questions about the plan? Any questions? Okay, so let's start out talking about a number line. And a lot of a lot of what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna to have to go in because this is this is a drawing kind of day. Okay, I'll do that Double check, yeah. Okay, so um, I like to use this program because it's got the things I need to draw. And a number line, the first thing is it's a line. So I'm gonna draw. So let's draw a number line. And I'm gonna do it using this tool. I'll just pop an arrow out there. Maybe I'll make it a little thicker. Yeah. And now let's pop one the other direction because the number line goes in both directions. And I'll do it like that. You don't have a double arrow. Um, but that's as close as I can get to a double arrow. Okay, that's the first thing. So a number line goes in both directions, goes forever, left and right. And then what it represents are numbers, otherwise it wouldn't be a number line, otherwise it'd just be a line. So often, but not always, often you want to write down your numbers and often zero is an important one, not always again. So 
let us draw, I'm going to draw some tick marks. And I'm going to draw them as vertical tick marks. As vertical as I can get. Whoops. Not as arrows, though, as lines. There we go. That's better. That was still different there. So let's do that. That's better. And you just draw a bunch of tick marks. They're supposed to be equally spaced. Again, we're doing it by hand. I want to show you by hand because that's the way you're often going to do it. Sometimes you're going to do it with my open math, with the homework kind of problems. And then you have a, a computer program that helps you with it. I want to show you by hand too. That's important. And then what you do is you label your numbers. And I'm going to keep it simple for now, and then we'll change that later. So to label your numbers, let's say that's negative 2. And that's negative 1. And that is 0. And a 1. And a 2 and a three. Okay, and that's an example of a number line. So a number line, again, you've seen them before, but it might have been a while since you actually drew one. But a number line is all about drawing a double arrowed line and then putting some tick marks that are slightly misspaced and then labeling numbers on them. Okay, so that's the first thing. Any questions so far? Okay, then you often have to draw points on a number line. So let's say I want to draw the point at two. So then what you do is you typically take a circle and sometimes you put it like right on it, sometimes you put it above it, depending on what you're doing. And I've now drawn the point at two. So I plotted a point on the number line. Pretty simple. Do you all agree this isn't too bad? Is this feeling like easy review instead of brutal math? What do you all think? It's always better if you uh, participate. So say something, put the chop off, and you're actually doing it. <laughs> OK, good, easy. I hope you don't all fall asleep. I apologize. It's going to get harder, though. Okay, so I don't want to give you, like, thinking everything is going to be easy for the rest of the class. Uh, even today is going to get harder than this. But I wanted to show you one quick example of drawing a number line. And that's it. That was easy. Okay, I hope you find that that easy. You've been doing that for a long time, but maybe not recently. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so remember, the point of this class is a review of stuff that you did a long time ago. So what... Uh, I do want to warn you that there's a big difference between watching me doing it, do it, and doing it yourself. That could be tough. Okay, so now let me give you another example. I'm going to erase what I've got. And now we're going to get a little bit harder. So let me do an erase. Let's see how do I erase and save this time. I think, oh, I know how I can do it. Just save and close and then get rid of it. Where is it? Uh-oh. All right, something happened, just a minute. I'm still in there, didn't save and close. Menu's gone. Sorry, I'm going to have to stop again. Let us do that. And then I have to come back. Stuff happens. It's called technology. <laughs> the old turn it off, turn it back on. That usually works. There we go.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to do another example. Now the question is plot points, let's say um, 2020, 2020. So we're going to talk about the years coming up. 2022 and 2025 on a number line. Okay, so 2020, 2022, and 2025. So what I can do is I can do the same thing. I can insert. There we go. And I can start the same way. Make a quick little arrow. And then do it again. Oops. Okay, what is the problem with what I'm about to do? Let me show you. There's going to be an issue in this. Ah. Except I got to make it a line and not an arrow. Still give me an error, sorry. Line. Push it away. Take a line out of it. There we go. All right, let's suppose I do that. I'm gonna just start and I'm gonna do what I did before. What's the problem? Why did I just make a mistake? thoughts. See if you can jump in. You can say it or type it. What's the problem with what I just did? I want to plot 2020, 2022, and 2025. Yeah, if I start at zero, if I start at zero and I need to get 2020 and 2022, 2025, they're really far from zero but they're really close to each other. Does that make sense? So I don't have a long enough line. I only have my screen. And that's all you're gonna have is your screen or your, you know, you have a class, you do everything online, so you only have a screen also. So you're not gonna get a long line. Okay, it's not possible. So the first thing is that can't be zero. So you have to decide where you wanna start your number line. Where do you think a good place is? Yeah, if you want to start at 2015, you can. I am actually going to start at 2020. Let's start today. Because that's where I want to focus. So a lot of times on a number line, a big piece of it, the point of a number line is to tell a story. And if we want to plot 2020, 2022, and 2025, that's our story. So put 2020 pretty far to the left. You, the, but you definitely don't want to plot zero because you'll have no space for anything. Okay, then we're going to have to start counting. And I'm just going to do it and say it, and then we'll write it later. So that's 2021, 2022, 2023. 2024. It's not letting me. Let me not do that one. Let's do this. Oops. And let's go like that. And then it'll let me. So 
20, 20, 21, 22, 23. Now I'll be able to 20, 24. And then 20, 25. And that's as far as I need to go. So I just need to plot what I've got. Now, I can put the rest of them in. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025. Any questions on that? And then I got to put my um, little circles in. So 2020 is one of the numbers I said I want to plot. I wanted to plot 2022. Oops, missed it there. And I want to plot 2025. And now I plotted my points. So you have to think before you start drawing. And sometimes that's where you go wrong, is if you don't think, you just put the zero there, you're screwed. Any questions on this idea? Not too big a deal? Okay, let me save this guy. And it looks like a beautiful number line. Okay, a little tilted, but I'm not the perfect artist, so I do my best. Okay, so now we've talked about plotting points. Now we want to talk about the distance between two points. Okay, and that is not too hard as long as we look at examples. And I'm not going to make them too fancy because it takes forever to draw it, but you'll be able to handle it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to draw a picture and let's see if we can find the distance between the two. So again, we're going to do a double arrow. Let's make it a little thicker. There we go. That one's got to get thicker too. Okay, and now let's look at some points. Okay, and let's suppose the first one was negative 2.4, and the second one was 7.5. So let's save it. So the question is, as I mentioned, find the distance. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I gotta make them points. There we go. There, now I can do it. Find the distance between the two points shown above. So how do we do that? 
How do you find the distance between two points when they're numbered, the point negative two, four, and seven, five? Any thoughts? So now we actually have to do some math instead of just drawing. Yeah, and that's the key. When you're finding the difference between the distance between two points, you take the right point, the right distance is equal to the right minus the left. So in this case, the right is 7.5. Minus the left is negative 2.4. Okay. And Mike had the idea. Yeah, so be real careful about these signs. Okay. So it's 7.5 minus negative 2.4. It's not 7.5 minus 2.4. You see the difference? Okay. What you can do is say minus a minus is a plus. So that's the same as 7.5 plus 2.4. And that is 9.9. Uh, .9. Any questions at all on this example? Any questions? Not too bad. Okay. Um, watching it is really easy, at least for most people. The what go what happens is you can make a little mistake and then it's just wrong. So little mistakes are things like forgetting a minus sign. That's a real common mistake that people will make. Okay. Adding instead of subtracting, that's a mistake. Okay. You want to go the right minus the left and make sure that if the left is negative. Then we get a negative. If the right is negative, that's negative also. Any questions on that? By the way, can the distance ever be negative? Can the final answer ever be negative for a distance between two points? What do you think? No, it makes no sense to say the distance is negative. Okay, distances can never be less than zero. So 9.9, .9, that's a happy answer. Any questions at all on this idea so far? Okay, so that was a distance between points. Not too bad. I can do another example, but I think I want to spend a little more time on the harder pieces. And I want to look at inequalities. Okay, and they're, they're important. So inequalities. Okay, the drawing is not really what I need to spend a lot of time on because that's not so hard. What's hard is the words. So let's take a look at some words that come with inequalities. Let me do some that um, you're probably all familiar with. So you must be older than, actually, let's go great, your age. Let's do it that way. Must be at least. 21 to buy that alcohol. Alcohol. Okay, any questions on the question so far? Okay, I, I use this as an example. Because I think it's helpful to have things that you already know, okay? And I think everyone knows that a four-year-old is not allowed to buy alcohol. Do you all agree? Okay. So that shop owner would be very much, you know, taken out of business if the shop owner got caught selling a four-year-old alcohol, okay? On the other hand, can a 21-year-old buy alcohol? Yes. Okay. So again, the sentence you're used to, what I want to do is I want to focus on a very important two words, and that's at least. So when you see at least, 
that means you start at the number and you go up above at the number or above okay a lot of people have trouble with that because the, when you hear the word least it sounds small but i want to let you know at least is big not small and i always just jump to 21 because everyone knows that okay and if you got gray gray hair you can buy alcohol sound right okay unless you're young and you dyed it but forget that okay so let's graph that on a number line so what we're going to do is i'm going to go back and we got to do our number line first to unselect. There we go. Okay, and then I really only need the number 21 here. So it's not letting me make that line happen. There we go. So I just need 21. I don't even care about other numbers. 21 and up, at least 21. So let's put 21 in. And the first thing I do is I draw a circle, a shaded in circle. And I like to draw it above the line. It's a little easier to understand if it's above the line. Then, I draw an arrow from that. And that's my at least 21. So notice a couple things. One is that I have the dot at 21 and the dot is shaded in. Shaded in means you include it. Any questions on that? Um, here's the problem with the TI-84. The problem with the TI-84 is that it's very hard to take a TI-84 and put it on your computer. Does that make sense, Mike? So instead, what's going to happen is you're going to have homework problems to do and test. The test problems are homework problems, by the way. And that has a graphing uh, capability. Okay, where you just click, and it's much easier than what I just did, by the way. Much easier than I'm using Google Sheet, Google uh, Doc. But this isn't too bad, and it's pretty, isn't it? Okay, so the shaded circle means that we're including 21. Okay, so let me do another example where it's going to be different. So let's suppose. that you can cannot enter unless you have more than 
$1,000. And we want to graph that in a number line. How is that different from what we just did with the, um, you must be at least 21? What are the words that are different? That's going to make it different on how we're going to have to shade on the number line. Yeah, it's more than instead of at least. So let me highlight more than. So notice now we have more than. Okay, if you have exactly a thousand dollars, can you enter? What do you think? No. But what if you had a thousand dollars and a penny? Can you enter? Yeah. So this is a case where you need to indicate that a thousand is not included, but everything above a thousand is included. Is that clear? So let's try it. Never lets me draw the second one on top of the first one. I'm going to make it work though. Got it. Okay, so let's plot 1000. So I need to get a line in there. Okay, and now we don't want the circle filled in because filled it, filling it in means including it. So I'm going to draw a circle, but then I got to play with it. And I am going to make sure it's not filled in. See that? And now I can draw my line. Now, do you see the big difference between these two, the top one and the next one? Okay, other than 21 versus 1,000. So if you are not including, then you draw what's called an open circle. And if you are including, we draw what's called a closed circle or a filled in circle. Any questions on that? Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna draw these, but I wanna talk about some others, because again, there's some more words I want you to know that are gonna be helpful for statistics. Okay, what about, what does it mean to have at most five, What's that mean? Actually, I think I might draw this one on the number line. What does that mean? How is this one different? You include five, 
And do we go up from five, like we did with 1,021? So what does that mean? Okay, so yes, you include five, but yeah, it's five or less, not five or more. And that's the important thing, is to be able to read things like at most. And at most is an means on the left hand side, not the right hand. Any questions on that? Okay, I want to mention something else. Can you have 3.2 hats? Would that count? No, because it's not possible. You can't have 3.2 hats. Can you have negative seven hats? What do you think? No, you can't have that either. Okay, so let's go on the number line. And let's see what you can have. So let me draw my arrows again. Now let's draw some lines. Oops. Don't think it'll let me do it. Not letting me do a line, it's only letting me do an arrow. One more try. Let's do this. There we go. Now I gotta move it. So I'm just putting a bunch of dashes in, then we'll start counting. Okay, so the first thing we already know that you can't have fewer than zero. Can't have fewer than zero, it makes no sense, okay? Does zero count? Is zero included? So let me put these numbers in. Yeah, zero counts. You can have zero hats. Okay. Most people don't, but it could happen. So at most five hats means that we need to plot some circles.
And that's the graph of at most five. Okay, any questions on this? Any questions? Not too bad so far? Okay, now let me give you some statistics examples. So again, I mentioned a few. So let me do some more drawing. And it's gonna weird looking drawing, but it's gonna happen in stats. Today's a drawing day. I don't know if you figured that out, but pretty much that's what we're doing is we're trying to see how you can look at drawings. I wanna go to there. One more time. There we go. I'm going to draw what's called the five point summary. Okay, it's something that you haven't necessarily seen before, except it's. Ah. Let's try this. Takes a moment to draw us. And now there's some more drawing I gotta do. better. And one more line. There we go. Actually, two more lines. Okay, have you seen this before? Let me know if you've seen this kind of picture before. You've seen it for grading? Okay, it's used for all kinds of different things. Um, I don't know if we have any young people here, I never asked your age, uh, but everyone, everyone in middle school right now and high school, 
they're learning this stuff. Um, when I was a kid, that wasn't part of it. And in fact, it's pretty new. It's called a box plot. And it's a big piece of, it's a part of statistics that you do. And this is called the five point summary. Tw um, 12 is the minimum, 29 is the maximum, 24 turns out to be the median, and 22 is the first quartile, 28 is the third quartile. So there's statistics words, you're not responsible for them today, but next quarter you will be, or next time when you take the step class. What you are responsible for is to be able to look at this, and say, how wide is the box? How do you figure out how wide, is, wide the box is? Yeah, you subtract. So it's the same as the interval difference. So it's gonna be 28 minus 22. And that's equal to six. It takes all longer to draw than to do the math. I told you the math is easy. What's new here is hearing the word box plot, five point summary, all that kind of stuff. And that's all gonna happen next quarter. Any questions on this? Any questions? Okay, so that's a box plot. I have a couple more examples to do, and then we'll call it a day. I wanna talk about margin of error. You heard of margin of error before? Have you heard of margin of error? It's used a lot in the news and stuff like that. It's a big piece. It's a huge, it's a big piece of statistics. We're going to be doing it in what's called confidence intervals. If you do it with me or whoever you do it with, and we're going to be looking at margin of error. Okay, not that you recall this Okay, so let's suppose the mean elevation of um, let's go cities in California is 1,400 feet. A confidence interval was found to be Twelve hundred and thirty one, comma, fifteen sixty nine. And let me draw a picture of that. So fourteen hundred, twelve thirty one, fifteen sixty nine. Better write those down, I'll forget. Twelve thirty one, fifteen sixty nine, fourteen hundred. So let's go ahead and guess what? We're gonna draw another number line because that's what today's all about. I'm learning how to do this. If I draw it right on the line, it never lets me do it. So 
So what we had was 1231. We had 1400. And 1569. Okay, now I gotta give you some information. The margin of error is the distance from the center of the confidence interval to either bound. So left or right, it doesn't matter because it's always symmetric. Find the margin of error. So how do you do this? Oh, my screen is zoomed in. Just a minute. Does it help? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. So how do I find, how do I find the um, margin of error here? What am I asked to do? This is the old, you have to read the question real carefully. And it's, the math is easy. The words are always the hard part. So what do I have to do math-wise? Don't all jump in at once. <laughs> or maybe you should all jump in at once. So the margin of error is the distance from the center of the confidence interval to either bound. Thoughts? It's always better if you guys do it than if I just tell you. There's a lot of you, so I'm sure someone's got it figured out. Okay. So we got one idea to subtract 1231 through from 1569. The other is a difference from 1400 to 1569 or 14 to 1231. Okay, the second is, is the right answer. Okay, so we want to go from the center to the edge, not from edge to edge, but center to edge. So, so no division needed. We just go center to edge. And it turns out it doesn't matter which one, you get the same answer. And so let's go 1569. I think that's a little easier minus 1400. And what do you get? You could use a calculator, but this one's pretty easy. Yeah, 169. And there's our margin of error. Okay. Sometimes in statistics, we'll say plus or minus 169, but I'm good enough with 169. Any questions on that idea? Okay, I have one more example of some statistics also. And let me show you how this works. And again, one more drawing. That's better. I'm going to make this one bigger because that's what we're caring about. Now I'm going to do some more drawing.
Okay, so what we have is something called a uniform distribution. I can even pop it in here. Above is a uniform distribution. Okay, to find the height of the rectangle, you first have to find the base. What is the base? of this rectangle. Okay, and by the way, just to let you know, um, on Thursday in my statistics class, this is what we're doing. <laughs> so this really does come up. So we're gonna spend a whole day on this, not just the base, but in the height and everything else. Yeah, so to find the, to find the base, again, we're finding the distance between the two. And that's going to be the base is equal to 39.1 minus 14.3. Okay. And again, you're welcome to use a calculator. And that's um, 24.8. Any questions on this example? How did I get 24.8 or how did I get 39.1 minus 14.3? Or you figured it out. Okay, you got it? Good, good. Okay, so the very last thing, which we always have to do. Is the secret word. And the secret word of the day is interval because this is all about um, intervals. So that's the secret word. And again, you definitely have to do the secret word quiz um, so you don't have to take notes. That's always good. Still good to take notes, but you don't have to email me notes. So it saves you that at least. So there's our secret word is interval for this week. Okay, so we made it. I always try and Try and make it between an hour and an hour and a half. A little, usually a little on the short side of that. So hour and 10 minutes is about right. So what I want to do is I am going to stop the share. And I want to open it up to any questions that you might have about anything. Next week will be Monday. We're trying to go every other week. So if you have something going on every Tuesday, you don't have to miss every week. So next week will be Monday, by the way. Um, but I'm always around to help out. Um, post on the Q&A forum. And I always check your email. I try to always give you a reminder when everything is due. I send out uh, an announcement that should get sent to your LTC email address. So for example, um, Thursday, so that's in two days will be your discussion post. Initial discussion post is due. If you do it by Wednesday, then I look at it and make sure that it's appropriate. And that way you don't have to lose points. Okay, as long as you, as long as you do what I tell you to do. I say, go fix it and then you can do that. Uh, so that's just a note is that, um, you know, always pay attention to the, um, to your email. Okay, and the announcements that I send. And you can do that through Canvas. So I'm here for questions, if you have any questions. Um, what I'll always do is I'll hang out until you guys are tired or have no more questions, but I'll be happy to answer questions if you have any. When, when you, um, when we were like seeing the, the example at most, is that a, we can interpret that as a, uh, greater or equal than? At most is less than or equal to. Okay. Yeah. So at most is less than or equal to. Or so equal. for example, okay. three, 
is at most 10. Sounds a little weird, but it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, Thank the you. hardest part about this chapter is the language, I think. Don't you agree? I mean, really, math, all we do is subtract two numbers. That's not too hard. But the words could get hard. Any other questions? Uh, Dawson or Tina, any questions? I'm going to send you an email with my um, uh, post because I don't know if it's, this is uh, uh, accurate for this class or it's more like an A grade math. Well, remember, you could post it if you post it today and it doesn't uh -huh. work, I'll let you know. Okay. And that way, other people, and then if it works, then other people could see that it worked. If it doesn't work, then other people will avoid the mistake. All right. So All the right. idea is it helps other people to be able to see a post that worked and didn't work. Do you see that? And both okay. directions are helpful. Yeah. So it's better to just All post right. it. And don't wait till Thursday, though. <laughs> like okay. today or tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And good night. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. And for all of you watching this as an archive webinar, don't forget the secret word quiz. Do that by this Sunday, and um, and that'll be great. And you don't have to send email me notes or anything. Um, this will be posted within a couple hours. Uh, have a wonderful night.